Hi there everyone, welcome to this tutorial. My name is Philippa and today I'm going to be showing you how to create some simple shadow effects for your text in Illustrator. This is from a request from one of my viewers. So let's have a look at what we're going to make. Just gone over to this other file and here's, um, it's not a scan, it's a really bad iPhone photograph of a very quick sketch I did. Just the letter G. And you can see I've chosen some nice swirly pieces there. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and I'll go to my layers palette. What I've made is I've uh, traced the letter and we can see that this has got as few points as possible. If you're interested in learning how to trace shapes like this I have a few other tutorials about how to use the pen tool. Uh, I've then actually created these parts down here. These are actually white elements which are sitting on top of the black. So if I ungroup this, I can actually grab the white part and move it away. So I'm going to do those two steps. So what we're going to be ending up with today is a look a bit like this. So it's kind of like a false shadow effect created with multiple lines. And you can see where the lines get closer and closer together, they form this shading. This type of shadowing is really useful if you can only print in solid colours, for instance, if you're doing screen printing, for example. Now, as I was doing this, I found that there were a few issues with my process. If you have a look up here, you can see that the lengths of the lines are all a little different, and that bothered me quite a lot. So I've got a, an idea around that. Uh, what I've done is I've taken this chunk over here and just duplicated it over to here to show you what I've done. If I zoom in on here, you can see that I've just rounded the ends of the points. To round the ends of your points, you can do this. So if I grab my pen tool, shortcut is P, and I start drawing one of these curves. I'll probably draw in black so I can see it. There you go. Get my white arrow tool, the direct selection tool, bring up the handles, get my pen tool, hold down alt, Quit dragging this side down. Now we get a lovely shape like this, however it's got the uh, points, a single point at each end and this can cause us issues when we do multiple um, strokes of different weights layered underneath it to look like a shadow. So instead what I'll do is actually round these corners off. So I'll zoom in quite close and when I'm doing this I always like to um, maintain the same zoom level. I just press P to get the pen tool and I'm going to draw an imaginary line across here and one, I'm going to place one point on one side and one point on another side. What Illustrator will do, it won't change the shape, it's just adding a point. So the curve retains the same shape, but it gives me the handles which will be needed. So you can see one long handle on this side and a little short handle on that side. So that means when I delete this one, I get a little curve. And I didn't actually have to change anything, I just clicked twice. So I'll repeat that procedure down here. So I'm just choosing a spot, however wide you'd want it. If you want a really wide um, curve, you can do it quite a bit further back. Oops, missed. And then just delete that one. And that will give you a curve. You can, of course, edit these if you like. But having these curves on the end, these soft curves instead of harsh points, will work much better for this technique. So, what do you do? How do you get this look? Well, first off, this has got um, the solid black, and then a white bit, and then a heavy dark bit, 
and then a whole lot of thin alternating black and white lines. What it actually is, is a series of layers, a series of copies of the same shape. So if I grab this bit, I think I've, yep, I've grouped it. I'm going to just bring it into clear space. I'm going to copy it, Control C or Command C. And then instead of going um, paste, which would be Command V or Control V, uh, that usually puts it in the center of your artboard. I'm going to use Control Command B, which is paste in back. And it places it in exactly the same place. Normally I use um, Command F, which is paste in front, because I want to work with the artwork. But in this case, I want the artwork to be behind the main black. I'm then going to use my um, arrow keys on my keyboard so I'm just going to hit them one two three to the right one two three down and now you can see that one is poking out from behind I'm then going to set attributes similar to this so I'm going to make it the default colors and we can see it's getting quite close it's actually potentially a little bit too far away so I'm going to go back left one and up one and I can look at adjusting the stroke so maybe a 1.5 point and there will be okay I'm going to repeat that again copy it paste them back this time I'm just going to go across one and down one and I'm going to alter the width of that stroke right down we try 0.5 I find this technique works as long as you go the same number of steps across as you do down. So we'll get that like that. I'm going to repeat, so copy, paste in back. And now this last one you want to go quite a way so that you can get room for some more. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there's plenty of room between this point and this point here. And you can see they're all lined up in a nice line down here. This last piece is where the magic comes in. Instead of copying each of these and manually placing them, I'm just going to use a blend. So I'm going to grab both of these, the two thin ones underneath. I'm going to go up to Object, Blend, and just go to Blend Options to start with. To make sure we get it the right type of blend choose specified steps because we don't want to like a gradient here we actually want individual lines and then choose a number you may have to experiment with this number a little bit I'm just going to sort of say one two three one two three four let's try five see what happens and nothing will happen because you have to go back up to object blend make and there's a keyboard shortcut there if you use it a lot and there we go it fills them in let's just zoom out and have a look so that's not a bad result I do have some little pieces going wrong in here I wonder what's causing that let's pull it apart and see so I'm just going to grab this top piece which should have the white in it as well and I like to move things out of the way by holding shift and using the arrow keys and just counting so I'll just go and move it up hold shift one two three four five six seven that means I can just snap it back down again and we can see that underneath there that white that piece of white actually got that attribute with the outline as well so I actually don't need that under there I'm going to use the direct selection tool the white arrow tool just select this push two times on the delete key to remove it Select this again, hold shift, one, two, three, four, six, seven, and we're done. I do suggest that if you're going to use this technique that you get the basis of your letter forms developed first, get that perfect before you um, move into this technique for adding depth and shadowing. I hope this has been helpful for you. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else you'd like me to make a tutorial on. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe to my channel. Bye!